Welcome to another session of Ask Zak, of course, with myself and my trusted colleague, Albert. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another session of Ask Zak. And today, Zak, we're going to focus on making the most out of the breeding season. Now, as you will start to notice outside when you're going outside and the sun is setting, the temperature might be getting a little bit cooler mm -hmm. and the sun is coming up a bit later in the morning and setting a bit earlier at night now this is the change of season autumn is on its way winter is on its way and it's absolutely crucial that we know that our animals first of all are gaining condition making the most out of their felt during this time and of course that we maximize the breeding season now but before we touch that zuck we've always got the animal health aspect that is vitally important for our herd Yes, and of course, just to add to that, uh, we're looking specifically at our sheep and our goats uh, today. So our products and everything is going to be focused on it. Now, as Albert said, health is, of course, crucial. Now, first of all, we want to eliminate all forms of competition within the animal's body and outside of the animal's body. Now, when I talk about those things, we're talking about, of course, our worms that's inside the intestines that compete, of course, for the natural resources. Some worms absorb uh, the nutrients that the animal take in. And, of course, we've got our uh, blood-sucking parasites as well that, of course, uh, puts a strain on your, uh, basically, your immune system, your blood circulatory system. So with those things we need to sort, sort out. Otherwise, you can give the best feed, you can give the best care, but your feed is not going to work because there's so much comp competition. Remember, we're in the business of feeding animals and not parasites or worms, and that's very important. Of course, externally, just as important, because if we've got an ir irritation on the outside of the animal, we know that animal's production is going to go down. If they've got a load of ticks, those ticks are, of course, uh, some of them are disease-carrying and vectors for diseases that, uh, that can, uh, of course, uh, be a big uh, um, break to your whole system. And, of course, stress on the animal, uh, irritation, flies. Uh, few people think about it, but flies constantly, constantly sitting on the animal, they're twitching, they're irritated, they're not going to eat as much as you need to be, uh, as they need to be. And that's very important. So to kick it off, first of all, deworming. Uh, two main methods. First of all is the oral dose like Prodose, Eradiworm, those type of products that you dose into the back of the mouth. Just remember guys, according to body weight. There's another way that you can deworm them as well and that's with our Ivermectin injectables, products that we call uh, Ivermac, Ecomectin, there's quite a few on the market but we're looking specifically at Ivermectins. Those will sort out your internal parasites. Just an important note, guys, very important with your ivermectin. A lot of people think that's going to sort out the ticks. Ivermectin only sorts out our blue tick, and we've got more than one species, a species of tick in South Africa, so it is not going to be sufficient when it comes to external parasite control. And of course, when we get to our external parasites, very important, we've got two ways of uh, giving uh, of uh, giving tick treatment first one is the mixing and spraying the animal very uh, of course make sure you wet the animal properly all over the body underneath the belly in the groin areas under the other uh, uh, wherever underneath the tail just make sure you wet the animal pro uh, properly with your porons this is a little bit easier it uses the oils of the skin to transfer over the whole animal. So just wait, if it rained yesterday, please just wait two or three days before you apply your pour on dip. Now your pour on dip, very important again, is according to body weight. So what we advise a lot of uh, farmers to do, um, you need to be able to measure your animals. Now there's two ways of doing that, either with a scale, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, or you get the animal weight band that looks like a measuring tape that you put around the animal and it gives you approximation of the animal's weight so that you are a little bit more accurate. So that is very, very important. And Zach, I think that uh, weighing tape is actually dual purpose. You can use it on your cattle and on sheep. So yes. I think it's just for ruminants, but a wonderful product for long term. It's quite an old school technique, but it hasn't failed us in the past. Now, when it comes to managing your herd for the breeding season, what we are looking for is because we've had these late rains and Zach just mentioned the products that will make the difference in your herd by making sure the parasites aren't parasiting on your animals. But when it comes to the management of your herd 
for the breeding season which is upon us now in april coming april now we want to make sure that the vulva is nice and clean it's nice and sheared open so you can make sure that we want to make the mating process as easy as possible for our animals so that we have a good lambing percentage and a good weaning percentage at the end of the day now when it comes to that we, of course we want to make sure with our females that she's nice and sheared open her tails have been docked there's no fly nest with the feces there that may cause an infection even on her vulva and then indirectly in her uterus that will impact your reproduction so make sure she's nice and clean nice and open she's fine and then of course look at the hooves she must be able to carry the weight of the ram while he's servicing her if she has a problem with her hooves now in this time of the year when we have those late rains and we've got a lot of rain and a lot of wetness and the hooves are too long it will impact her so make sure that her hooves are well trimmed they are not overlapping they're not overlapping under not over make sure they've got a nice hoof so if you're on a sandy area or an area that doesn't have a lot of rocky outcrops they will weather down the hooves naturally but make sure your hooves are sheared correctly maybe look uh, search google search hoof sharing a sheep or a goat to make sure that your hooves are looking good and of course with your rams we want to make sure the same thing they must be able to climb and service our ewes so they must also be able to put that weight on their hind legs so they we need to make sure that the um the sheath the penis sheath all of that is nice and clear there's no ticks over there it's nice and open can easily do the job that it should be doing the hooves are nice and trim so they can withstand that body weight and then the body condition this is absolutely vital Zach. if our ewes are not on the right condition they will not fall pregnant if they are over fat they will also not fall pregnant and the same with our rams if our rams are fat they get lazy they don't work so what you can do is eight weeks before you introduce your rams to your ewes if your rams are a bit overweight take them for a jog tell your worker to go take them for a jog in the camp and just herd them around get them moving give them their one percent ram lamb and ewe pellets per day and of course if you have good uh, felt out there if you still have good grazing put out the sheep block so that you don't have um, um, kidney stones that's going to cause a problem in your reproductive tract of course all your alzu sheep and goat feeds are enriched with ammonium chloride to prevent these kidney stones so let's get back to it eight weeks before we're going to give them their ram lamb and you one percent of that and if they're over fat we're going to just increase their activity level let them work around in the camp take them for a jog and they will start losing that condition if they need to pick up condition this is where our production meal comes in now zuck our production meal has got bypass protein it's got some millis in there for energy and of course salt just to put the brakes on so that they don't overeat on it but that production leak can be put out for our ewes and our rams so that they quickly build condition to where they should be they should be about a three uh, body condition score when it comes to mating so four weeks before uh, mating we can start introducing some dummy rams if you have dummy rams available that have been castrated just to let they will still release pheromones of course of course our ronde rib afrikaner our damara our indigenous breeds breed right throughout the year if you use them as dummy rams in the breeding season that will stimulate that will get the ewes into ovulation and then four weeks after you've introduced that you can introduce your rams keep the production meal still out now when our ewes get the production meal in that bypass protein will give a response because the bypass protein bypass the rumen gets absorbed in the small intestine and we have a super ovulation meaning your ewes will have twins you will have a better conception rate and at the end of the day you'll have a healthier animal that can fall pregnant withstand that pregnancy give you a good heavy lamb at birth and of course wean that lamb and that's the whole idea that we want to get so if you are using an external system use our alzu sheep block out in the felt to make sure your animals are getting the required nutrients and then of course if you want them to pick up condition put out the production meal ad lip and of course always ram lamb and ewe pellets one percent of body weight and you will definitely reap the benefits now and just another important thing that we sometimes uh, a lot of farmers overlook is just the quality of grazing or good roughage uh, lucerne doesn't go through as roughage when we talk about good roughage we're talking about erogrostis or teff any of those grass species uh, will be a good roughage if you run into the roughage shortages your animal you can give the best feed you ever want the roughage is the one that's stimulating the room and you need those long fibers to help scratch in the room and, and of course help the bacteria in there so if you do not give good roughage you can give the best feed your animal is not going to perform so make sure you always have good roughage out there for your animals ad lip that they, they mustn't run out it must always be there otherwise your animals will not perform
and the most beneficial way of feeding your animals is splitting your feeding in two so let's say we're feeding about 15 kilograms for about 36 ewes we're going to give seven and a half kilograms in the morning let them go out on the felt or let them go in the crawl and eat that roughage the end of the day when they come back into the crawl give them the second half of their ration that's the most efficient way we stimulate intake and we know that the animals are getting in what they should be getting and getting in that roughage like Zach is saying. So if your animal is having diarrhea, you can look at our sulfur-based antibiotics like your Cairo Trim or your EcoSulf LA. Make sure you keep them on that roughage ad lib for about three days, just roughage. You can even give them a bit of a vitamin and a mineral um, oral dose, our OV Thrive, our Bovi Thrive, a lot of solutions at your Olzu Depot available. Now, all these things that, as Albert said, is available at the branches and, of course, information. That's because that's our business that we're in. We love to train and teach farmers. That's why we're sitting in the bucky. We're out and about in the field. Now, uh, very important, uh, Farmers Days, we have every Thursday. So uh, make contact with your nearest depot to make sure when and what their Farmers Day is going to be about. And, of course, all the product information is of, uh, available at the branch itself. So make a uh, turn at your Aussie One Stop Shop so that you can get everything that you need under one roof. Have a look out for those ads on our Facebook page as well on our WhatsApp groups that we have available. Even on our Instagram, we are marketing those information days to get the people in. We can't wait to meet you all at these information days. And if you are a regular customer, thank you for using Aussie and thank you for watching Ask Zuck. Like we usually say, it's an absolute privilege and honor being here. As you can see, we're in the bucky now. We're seeing clients. We're at our branches giving support. And we can't, that's the benefit of being an Olzu customer. So, Zach, thank you for another Ask mm. Zach session. I think we've covered most of it by making the most out of our breeding season this time of the year. Remember, the season is changing. Our, day, our, our, our night lengths are getting longer. So, our animals are getting sexually um, reproductive. That's when our small ruminants, our sheep and goats, we have to make the most out of it. So, make sure you're using the correct Olzu products to make the most out of this breeding season. So, until next time, next Tuesday, same time, same place. Tune in. See you guys.